Welcome to Brave with Lisa. This space is designed to inspire, champion, and equip you to bravely walk in that unique rhythm of grace and calling that God has designed just for you. I'm so excited you're joining us today. Welcome to Brave with Lisa. I'm your host, Lisa Bruton. And today I'm so excited because I have Melody Towns with me. And I have actually been wanting to connect with this amazing woman for a good while now. I've been following her on social media. So today's actually first time I get to chat to her one-on-one. So welcome, Melody. Thank you. So nice to actually put a face to your name and chat, likewise, following along your journey. And so, yeah, it's the benefits of social media, isn't it? We actually get to meet amazing people. It really is. It's been fantastic watching you. And I can't wait to hear about your story. I've just been so excited to hear the behind scenes story of what you're doing now. So can you share about what's going on in your world right now um, and what you're passionate about? Yeah, sure. So I uh, live in Hobart in Tasmania. So for those who aren't aware, Tasmania is part of Australia. <laughs> it's a little island right down the bottom. Uh, I didn't grow up in Tasmania. I actually grew up in on the mainland, as we like to call it here, uh, in New South Wales, but moved here with my husband about 20 years ago. Um, yeah, I have three children. So Judah, who is 15, um, Marley, who is like thinking 13, and um, Taj, who's 11. So they keep me pretty busy at the moment. Um, where we live is on a property, so there's no like bus routes or anything. So my main role in life right now is to be an Uber driver. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm kind of cherishing it because, you know, it's just the years go really fast. And so kind of just realizing it's those moments in the car. Um, back and forth a billion times a day that the conversations are happening and, and stuff like that. So, yeah, so, yeah, mum of those three beautiful kids, uh, married to Jake. Um, we've been married, yeah, for nearly 20 years. Um, he does real estate, um, which has been really great. He's quite competitive, so it suits his personality. Um, and I'm also the founding director of Be Hers, which is an anti-trafficking organisation uh, based here in Hobart, but we work nationally and globally uh, to help prevent human trafficking and then alongside other charities that fight against human trafficking. So yeah, that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds very full and wonderful. And I I have heard other mums with teenage kids say that they really treasure those times in the car as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah the silver linings. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah. Now, I am so interested and so excited to hear the behind story about how Be Hers began. Um, So you can start wherever you like and I'm just going to listen. Yeah, sure. So Be Hers has been running now for, gosh, it'd be nearly 12 years. So um, it's been quite a while, you know, over a decade. Um, But it began as just a way to make a difference. So it was a fundraising high tea um basically um I had gone to a conference which I'm sure many of you have been to the color conference and I hear stories all the time of people that have been to color conference which is Hillsong's women's conference who've been inspired to do something um to help in in the form of social justice and for me it was um when A21 another anti-trafficking organization presented about human trafficking that my heart was really stirred to do something Um, Yeah, and so I came back home and gathered my girlfriends and thought, actually, the main motivating factor for me in doing launching a high tea was actually just this feeling that I had of every year I come to this conference and I'm really inspired. But what does that look like for the women in my life that don't go to church? What does that look like for my community? They all want to be involved. They want to have purpose, but they might never sit in a conference like this. How do we bring this back home Um, and and let them hear these sad stories and let them be involved and actually engage the broader community? So, yeah, we launched a high tea. Um, It was pretty um, basic to begin with. Um, None of us had ever done events before, but um, it basically just captured the hearts of the women in our community. And so the first one, we had 100 women attend. Um, the goal was to raise, you know, a couple of thousand dollars. And I think the first one, we raised about 10. And I was like, wow, we raised 10,000. But more than that, the women that came were really moved. And so then the following year, they all brought tables. So they all started filling tables. So it went from this little tiny event to basically going from 100 people to 500 people to 1,000 people wow. and then just selling out. Um, overnight and it became this big thing in Hobart where everyone was talking about Be Her Freedom. The event was called Be Her Freedom Um, and alongside that 
people just wanted to get involved. So it just kind of organically grew. The team of volunteers grew. So at, at one point in time, we had over 200 local volunteers, um, many of them not from church, just security guards and, and lots of men from the city who heard the, the issue and wanted to help. Um, then we kind of branched out into smaller events in different states, which was challenging because keep in mind, um, I had um, three little babies at this time. Everyone on the team was volunteers. There was no actual organisational structure. It was just let's keep doing something and this has got momentum. Yeah, and then it kind of grew from there um, to what it is today, which is much more of an um, established charity. So we're now a registered charity um, and a social enterprise. So we do a lot more work in awareness and online, um, employing vulnerable women. And, yes, yeah, so it really grew. But to be honest, it was... Um, I look back on it now and just think it was just God's favour. Yeah. It was actually crazy. It was actually so crazy that people <laughs> were connecting and growing. And, you know, I'd see these other charities that were hosting fundraising events with big budgets and they couldn't fill seats and ours would just mm. sell out overnight. But, um, yeah, I think that's, for me that's the story of Be Hers. It was just wanting to do something mm-hmm. to um, fight against a really horrific issue that, that grabbed my heart and that God put on my heart. Um, and then God kind of saying to me, take out other people on the journey. And, and that's kind of what we've done. So, yeah. Amazing. I love the simplicity of just starting with something. Mm. And so what, how come you landed on high tea? Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think it was easy. I, I think there was a thing of, um, we had young babies at the time and so we could kind of gather, you could hire a venue. It wasn't too overwhelming to figure that out in the beginning. So it was just a basic one to four high tea, cost effective. Mm-hmm. Um, as we grew, they turned into big dinners and um, it was kind of an amazing way to get really creative. So we started um, partnering with um, like celebrity chefs in the city and, and doing these really extravagant, amazing events, but it's all sponsored and all donated. Um, but yeah, in the beginning, it was just something that we thought we could handle. Um, and the plan wasn't actually to keep keep it going. It was like, let's just do one and, and you know, make a difference. But then the momentum started picking up. Yeah. It's incredible. And so let's talk about that momentum because sometimes that can feel, while exciting, it can feel overwhelming as well. Yeah. Look, I think... Um, yeah, it's it's been a little bit of both. So I think as you as anything grows, um, you look back with hindsight and go, God's hand was on it because even though some things felt overwhelming at the time, it was mm. also in the capacity that we could carry at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, so yes, there were challenges. So I mean, just even a financial challenge. Like every year, we would donate money and then we'd give it all away, and so we'd start the following year with zero dollars. And so it's like we don't even have a deposit to put down yeah, for the next course. event, which we know is selling out. Um, but along the way, God just kind of provided, you know, there's just story after story of, you know, we needed a graphic designer and then a local boutique said, well, here's a graphic designer. We'll pay her for you and then put her on for us two days a week. And, um, yeah, then we had brand collaborations and different businesses came on board and started funding us. And then when we needed to become a, a registered charity, um, the accountants at KPMG, um, all cried when I told them the story and then they they helped us set it up so there has been very obvious um, favor and open doors on it but at the same time I guess coming up against challenges so um, yeah personal challenges more so I think sometimes when you're doing things like this um, we often talk in our team which is really interesting because um there's women from all walks of life, mm-hmm. but we'd quite often experience challenges in our marriages or whenever things started to really happen with events, things would come up yeah. um, and we'd all recognise them and, and chat about it. So, yeah, um, and then on a personal level for me, I guess as things have grown and, and we've had all this provision, I've also had um, a lot of health challenges come, mm-hmm. come alongside it um, that have really pushed us to kind of just rely on God really and every time I tried to do it by myself it just is overwhelming and stressful and um yeah just kind of getting back to that on your knees moment of like God help me I I can't open this door and if you don't want the door open shut it but um doors keep opening um, for this so yeah and you just touched on something there too in that recognizing when things felt weighty or like hard and when we're striving in your own strength as opposed Mm. to relying on God and so you could actually recognize when you were doing that 
Yeah, and look, to be honest, it happens all the time. Mm. Um, <laughs> you know, I think, you know, I think one of the things when you have um, really quick success like that, like I'm always reflecting on that. I think one of the most important things is to try and stay humble yeah. um, because we were selling out events. We were, you know, things were moving really quickly and were amazing. Um, but at the same time, every time things went wrong was when we started to feel like we got this. Like, yeah. we'll just do this. Like, we know how to do, like, a run a, you know, a PA system and a show on our own. And, we, you know, and you just start, whenever you get a little bit cocky, I think that's when things go wrong. Um, and then now it's just a different experience. So now it's, it's an overwhelming feeling sometimes of, you know, we're employing, we've got a sewing centre here and we're employing women from a refugee background, but you've got the weight of wages yeah. uh, and, you know, bills and different things and navigating how to actually run a, a, a social enterprise and a charity and I'm not built that way I like creativity and so <laughs> I find that quite like oh um you know and just having to constantly go back to God to really try and be diligent in how you manage things especially in something that's not my skill set so I just have to keep on going God do you want me to do this or, or putting the right people in the right yeah. places that are, are more skilled for that but yeah isn't that key, having the right people for the jobs? Totally. I think it's the best thing as a leader to just recognise that you're not going to be good at everything. And actually mm -hmm. um, one of the beautiful things that's come out of, of VHERS is actually this collaborative effort of all these people just bringing their skills and talents. And, you know, it's always stood out to me how amazing is it when we work together as a body and you can see just everyone shine in their capacity and when we've tried to do it on our own or haven't brought people in, that's when things actually go a bit south. Yeah. Yeah. So you've been doing this for a while now, Melody, and I can still hear the passion behind it. How do you um, keep the passion alive and, and stop it from, I guess, or, or even you feeling burnt out? Yeah, look, if I was really honest, I think, um, you know, going into COVID, COVID was actually kind of a blessing for me. I think I was starting to feel a little bit burnt out. Yeah. Um, we had grown really, really quickly and we're, we're kind of an amazing team in that our, just our, our core team and our board are very much similar personalities, which might not be a great thing, I don't know, but we're very much dreamers. Like, let's just do something, let's just do it and we'll figure it out later. And so that's mm -hmm. kind of how we've been running for the last five or so years um, and then COVID came along and I was feeling quite burnt out um, I had you know probably about five or six years ago my health started to decline I started to get this really um just this influx of chronic illness and autoimmune disease and it was just like one and then it was two and then it was three and so by the time that was kind of doing it alongside it and I had quite a few doctors say to me you really need to slow down you need to heal you need to get better um, but I had kind of I don't know I kind of just lift off the adrenaline of, of yeah. doing stuff and I found when I was at home quiet still which is probably what I needed to do I noticed that I felt so terrible yeah. um so COVID kind of forced me to stop and actually go okay what does this look like in a healthy sustainable way where you're not burnt out and and to be honest we we sat down and, and did restructure everything pulled right back on events and we're forced to anyway yeah, so I, yeah. I you know I think maybe God's kind in that we couldn't do an event anyway um and rebuilt um our whole strategy so you know had built in um yeah and and in the lead up didn't realize but we'd built in a social enterprise we'd built in a, a proper website we'd built in um, merchandise and um a funny little thing God had put on my heart to approach Catholic care here, which makes no sense in the midst of what we were doing to see if they wanted to be involved in starting a sewing centre because I had felt like we really need to do something local. I really, yeah. sometimes when you're doing like things and you're helping overseas projects and you're running events and you can get a bit caught up in the marketing and the business of it and forget what you're doing. And so yeah. I'd been praying, God, I just want to have that tangible impact locally. And so we had identified how do we work with um, people who might be at risk of being exploited in our own city and so it came up that refugee women here had um, have a very high risk of being labor trafficked and so anyway it was one of those things where I'd just gone in and basically just pitched them don't know how to sew or anything um, would you fund this sewing center and they said yes and 
in the exact moment they had run a sewing program that had shut down the week before so they had all these women that needed to learn how to sew and we said well, we've got this market and we can create products and we can sell these products give these women employment and we know that all those years of events women will buy these products and we'll put the money back into rescuing someone else and so we launched it and it, it kind of just changed a little bit of the direction of where we were headed um, we've done the same thing with She Rescue Home in Cambodia. So started doing merch with them and offering employment as part of rather than just giving a donation and started doing that. So, yeah, I think in hindsight, God is very kind in that. In, but he kind of had to force me to have a bit of a break. <laughs> um, yeah, and then even this year, like um, this year in particular, I had said I really need to step out a little bit. I was kind of doing a lot and not doing it well because I was doing so many different things mm. um and just said I need to get healthy and well but we've never really paid anyone properly before we decided we really need an operations manager on board um but how are we going to do that and within um a month we had an operations manager's whole salary for a year covered through sponsorship um oh. yeah and so I've had this year to rest and I honestly feel like maybe my passion I probably wouldn't have felt like this mm. if I didn't have that year to rest um and just seeing the good in the little things you know like just to be able to step away and the joy that some of the ladies in the sewing center bring me even though it's not massively big projects it's someone's life that's been really impacted and yeah it's just been a weird season but amazing that's so important too. It sounds like you've been very sensitive to like God's ideas, God's leading, but also hearing your body say, stop, slow down. It took, <laughs> it took me a while to stop and slow down. and But you know what? It's actually taken the whole year. I feel better now. And I keep mm -hmm. saying to my husband, I actually feel better. Like I had gone to the point where I felt like I that was it for my life. Like I was always going to be sick. I stood out the front of church so many times. I was never going to be healed. Um, be hers was a source of joy for me, which is why I kept putting yeah. into it. And so stopping was actually quite scary. You know, even employing yeah. someone else and giving them the job that I thought I would have, mm -hmm. you know, and just stepping back. But it's been so good to just listen to what God, I have felt for a long time to just slow down and be still and, um yeah and, and and I'm starting to feel the benefit of that now like all of a sudden I'm like I actually feel well like I feel joy and I didn't realize maybe when you're in the middle of a bit of a burnout you, and you know chronic health I didn't realize that it doesn't just take your health but it takes your joy um it takes your hope and so to be on the other side of that now is like wow like I don't know not just for be hers but what does life look like yeah. well um yeah and I I've I'm hearing this a lot actually from lots of different people, not just women, it's men as well, just feeling like they can feel or sense this slow down, like mm -hmm. there's a different rhythm for you. But it's scary because you're so used to your habits and, and like you, you're keeping the ball rolling and there's almost this fear that, well, if I slow down, what's going to happen, Lord? Like, And mm -hmm. then I also find when people slow down, and I've done it too, is that things catch up to you and you actually have some processing to do. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think maybe that's why we don't slow down mm. so often because you do have to face things. You know, I think some of the things that came to me slowing down one of the fear was, you know, not a fear, but I've started to identify is my identity caught up possibly in the work that I do with Be Hers. And, you know, even just God providing a wage for someone else and and actually being able to let go of that and you know my prayer in that space has always been help me to lead with an open hand but that's actually easy to pray and hard to do um you know and my fear always was um what what else will I do like I, I always wanted a career I wanted to be doing something so I had always been afraid of just staying at home with kids and so being unwell has kind of forced me to stay home but what's amazing about it is I'm finding so much joy in the little things like I'm just it. loving being a mom and, and just appreciating the season that I'm in while at the same time though also being able to lead be her strategically because my head's not overwhelmed able to actually look at the big picture and yeah think think through you know what does the next five years look like rather than what does the next day look like you know so <laughs> 
yeah, it's been it's been an interesting season, but a very healing season. Um, and still very much there's unknowns, but I just know, you know, when you just sense in your spirit, God telling you to slow down. I think that was my season for the last few few years and now that I'm feeling well I'm like oh now I have the capacity you know to have these conversations to get out there again and I remember a couple of times when I knew I was kind of burning out was mm. I just wasn't me like I was a bit short or I was a bit grumpy or I was just like I was like not the person that I wanted to be and it's like no nah, it's just I don't ever want to do this if I don't care about the issue if I don't care about the people that we're helping um, and more so like I you know, we at BHOs are very passionate about fighting human trafficking, but we're also very passionate about just making a difference in the people's lives that we're in, around every single day. And so if you are coming to the, any environment and you're not being who God's called you to be, it shows. And, um, yeah, people are very quick to say, oh, you're inspirational, but I'm actually not. Like God is the amazing, um, you know, sovereign piece in this puzzle. And without him or without, you know, me leaning on him, it actually just falls to pieces. So, yeah. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I have you found, because I find um, I have I have maybe one to two months off a year um, just because I do need to slow down and take a breather and rest. But I find that's where all the creative thoughts flow. That's where I get ideas. That's where you get the strategy. Have you found that? Yeah, I used to always find that when we were doing um, events in other locations and I'd be on long car drives or just any long car drive, mm. like, and then I start thinking about all this, you know, creative stuff and, and getting really passionate and excited about it. Exactly right, just switching off your brain, um, yeah, for long enough to actually listen to what you're meant to be doing. Um, and I find now, especially where we're at as a charity, it can be so easy to get stuck in the... Um, just the um, nuts and bolts of how to run a charity you know so we've got multiple things going on we do. So we, we do and so I was trying to explain it to someone the other day and they're like you've got a sleepwear range you've got a sewing center and you've got online and there's all these things happening um and you know also just learning as I go so I'm not you know I'm not I don't have a marketing marketing degree I don't have so I'm just constantly learning but I find the most creative stuff does happen when you do stop and you just ask God for direction and yeah, it's actually, yeah, it's it's really telling if you don't. Mm, it's so true. I'm going to do something a little out of the box now, Melody, and I'm going to ask, would you mind praying for the women and men listening who God is asking to slow down? Yeah, um, sure. Would you mind just imparting or just praying? I just feel like you've got something to, to give right now. Yeah, sure. Um, dear God, I just pray for anyone who is listening to this conversation who you've been speaking to for a while about slowing down. Lord, I just pray that you will um, just continue to press on their spirit that that it is you that they're hearing and that you will create opportunities and ways for that to be possible, Lord. Because sometimes it can feel like how could you possibly slow down in the midst of life? But I just pray that you'll bring to their attention ways that they can, that you will bring to their attention what's important and what's not important. That, um, yeah, that you will lead them to follow your clear voice and and trust you in, in slowing down, that they will know that you have them, that you have whatever they've put their hand to is yours and that you're ultimately in control and not us. And I just pray that you'll bring a peace and a confirmation to anyone that might be hearing this that that, that knows that you're talking to them. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, thank you, Melody. Now, Melody, I am so aware that, um, like you said, you've got lots of things to offer and actually different ways that people can, one, maybe get involved, but also just buying, buying products or how they can um, donate. So how can people find you and find more about Be, that, uh, Be Hers? Yeah, so um, they can find us online at behers.org.au. Um, yeah, and there's there's a multitude of ways that you can be involved. So ultimately, um, we work to donate 100% of our profits um, to fighting human trafficking. So if that's an issue that breaks your heart, like it breaks ours, mm. then, then jump online. There's a lot of information on our website about the issue, about ways that, that we help fight against that issue from like education and employment um, to rescue and rehabilitation, therefore areas that we focus on with our 
um, overseas partners, uh, but then also here locally. So, you know, like as I mentioned, our little sewing centre, um, by supporting um, the Beehurst Foundation through what you donate, basically that goes to our overseas projects or, or our sewing centre. And, you know, there's women in there who have fled the Taliban, who have horrific stories and, and they're being offered dignified employment. And I'll tell you what, that employment changes their lives. It's not just a handout, but it's actually someone saying, I believe in you, I'm going to give you, an, you, give you um, some hope that your future can look different. Um, we have volunteers from all different walks of life. So as I mentioned, there's graphic designers and photographers and ambassadors and yeah, people that have a skill set that think, oh, hang on, this really touches my heart. You know, we've got someone who's a writer and she writes blogs for us sometimes. And, you know, it's, it, that's really helpful. Um, majority of our team is volunteers. So if, if that's on your heart to volunteer, please reach out. Uh, we do host events, um, sometimes mainly in Hobart, but we have launched Freedom Gatherings. So Freedom Gathering is something that you can host we're in your city or your town, um, get some inspiration. Um, we can give you some um, inv invites and all the marketing stuff to help support it. Um, and then, yeah, donations and purchasing with purpose. So Christmas is coming. We have um, beautiful silk pillowcase sets that the ladies in the sewing centre have made, T-shirts um, that, you know, start conversations about human trafficking. Um, one says empathy over apathy. Another says ignorance is not bliss and, and freedom jumpers. And again, the profits mm -hmm. go straight back into, into the Beehurst Foundation. So yeah, jump online, check it out. That would be fantastic. Oh, Melody, thank you so much for just saying yes to God and, and just moving on that little, that small prompting that just wouldn't leave. And I just love that you started with what you could and God has just put favor and he's grown it, but you have walked side by side with God in this. And thank you for providing a platform for so many of us that see the need and are passionate about wanting to do something, but not knowing how, and you're actually giving us a how to do and impact something that's so atrocious in this world. So thank you. No, thank you. It's um, yeah. I think that's the thing, isn't it? Nothing's you can't do much on your own, but when a collective of people actually do something, it's it's quite powerful. Oh, thank you. You've really um touched my heart and inspired me today. And I know there's been many who will um uh, be inspired and impacted by what you shared today. So thank you for your time. No, thank you. Lovely chatting. Thanks for joining me on Brave with Lisa. I hope that it has inspired or impacted you in a small or large way. Feel free to comment, to subscribe and share with some friends. And please join us next week on another conversation we will have here on this channel on Brave with Lisa.